All right, guys. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the, you know, what do you tell uh, a family member or someone that's close to you, you know, kind of when they're an addict, what, you know, what's, what's the steps that you could do uh, to help them? And, you know, I get this question a lot from families. Uh, I work in an inpatient uh, facility. Uh, I've also worked in the outpatient setting too, but, you know, families will quite often call saying, you know, what can I do? What do I do? Um, so I come up with like five steps or five kind of principles uh, that you should always keep in mind as you're, you're dealing with this family member or someone that you're really close to. And I'd say the first rule is to uh, don't work harder than they do. Uh, because so many times I see family members who are saying, oh, I'm, I'm working to get them into this, this rehab or I'm, I'm, I want them to go to AA, I want them to do all this. And, and, uh, and really like the, the patient is not doing anything. And so what happens is the, the family member just gets burnt out. And so what I just strongly recommend is, you know, don't work harder than, than they do as, as the first rule. Number two, I would say is to, is to accept them for, for where they're at in the process. And because the, the last thing you really wanna do is to have them feel like, okay, I, I can't meet this expectation or there, people are wanting too much of me because they've already experienced that. And there's this core, core perception, this, 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 this inherent feeling of shame when they're not meeting expectations. And, these, they, and they have these, these moments when, um, you know, again, that, that if they feel that they won't be able to, to please somebody, or even when they're alone and by themselves, uh, they have this overwhelming sense of shame. So you have to, to, to remind them that, that you accept them for currently where they're at right now in the process and, and that you're here. You're here to support them with where they're at uh, you know, moving forward. The third step in this is to make sure that you set clear boundaries. Um, it's because the, the last thing you want to do, and, and I've seen this a lot too, is that when, when someone's going through this process, and obviously they're struggling, they've probably already burnt the bridge with family members all over the place. You know, a lot of times when we talk to them, it's like, well, do you have any family members that you can, you can go to, to reach out to for support? And, and a lot of times they're like, no, I, I pretty much you know, burnt every bridge that I have. So it's important that you, 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 you set firm boundaries. And so if you choose, say, to let the, that loved one back into the, into the family, the core unit of the family, um, you know, setting boundaries can mean like, okay, you can come and, and, and stay in this room, but the expectation is that if you stay in this room, you're going to, you know, be interviewing for jobs throughout. Or the option is you can, you know, you can stay in a tent in the backyard and, and we'll, you know, we still love you and, and we'll support you from there. So it's, 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 it's about giving them a choice, you know, not an ultimatum. Because again, the last thing that you want them to do is to feel like their back's against the wall and they don't have any say-so in the direction that they go. But if you kind of put at least two choices on the table, um, you know that they'll, kind of, they'll, they'll still feel like they have some sense of power um, and control in their life. So, but it's key to, to not let them impact the family, to not destroy uh, the family unit, and, and to also for you to recognize that there's other members of the family who, who you know, don't need to feel like they're being ignored for this, this one member. So it's, it's, it's really important that you set boundaries um, with that person. The fourth principle is to, is to understand that the, the best way out of addiction is it's, it's through connection. And if you, there's a study that was done, uh, it, it was called the Rat Park, where they basically, they, you know, they took mice and, and they gave them the opportunity to drink from a, a bottle full of, you know, cocaine or, or drugs or just water. And if, they, if the rat was isolated, uh, they, would, they would continue to drink the, rat, the, uh, the cocaine water or, or the, the one with the drugs and eventually, of course, they would die. But if they found that if the, if the rat had connection with other rats, that they would never choose the uh, the drug and they would choose the water and they would live a long life and they would essentially ig ignore you know ignore the substances and this even occurred after they were already if the rat was already addicted to something they would eat, they would just kind of wean themselves away from that but the the principle of this is is that it's 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 all about the connection uh, that you have with others is that really where the support is that that kind of digs people out of that hole um, there's a good TED talk on a guy. If you if you kind of Google in or a, a TED talk about he had Rat Park and every and it says like everything you needed to know about addiction. Um, it's a great TED talk. I'd recommend you you strongly watch that because you'll understand it's not you know you know trying, going to someone with a heavy hand just doesn't work. Uh, they they need that support. They need they need that 
connection with others. And if it doesn't happen with people, you know, perhaps you can start out with, with, you know, with, with animals, taking care of, you know, taking care of a, a, a stray animal, something that they can kind of see themselves in, someone who's been kind of given up on, uh, sometimes that allows them to start there and they can move on uh, and move up to, you know, connecting with others, which is something that they probably struggled with. And of course, the, you know, the, pretty much the fifth principle is to, is, is to kind of, somewhere along the way as, as they go through this recovery, is to kind of steer them in the direction of, of helping others. And, you know, because the, the data really does support that, that when you help someone else, um, you're actually, you know, you get more benefit from that as opposed to you just doing something for yourself. If you do that same gesture or, or action towards someone else, um, that it actually kind of kind of raises your level per se and and they found that that with addiction um, helping others can really kind of speed the recovery uh, per se and actually help people make that more connection and and feel good about themselves because it's it's just moving away from that core sense of shame that they have is really the principle that we're, we're, we're trying to accomplish here so again whether it's volunteering but it's just just a matter of helping other people is, is a key step that you can do for them as well so I'll say this: uh, everybody loves uh, everybody loves a great comeback story. One of the, the the talks that I give people when I when I when I work with them, usually it's in the inpatient setting, and they pretty much hit rock bottom. As I'd say, is that you know you, you have a great opportunity here. You know, obviously you you've hit rock bottom, and, and and if you really look back at all the even the movies that we all enjoy to watch, whether it's the Rocky or the Gladiator, it's it's the it's the people who've lost everything and then have made this 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 comeback. Um, because that really inspires others, um, and I always kind of stress to them is to, you know, once you, once you come back and when, once you recover from this, is to help the next guy in line, and right there, that just kind of gives people, you know, it gives them purpose, and you know, it gives them purpose and hope, and if you can have those key features, you know, you can kind of pull your way uh, out of this, and um, you know, and, and have a successful life. And one of the things that I would say to to remember, whether it's for for you approaching them or even them themselves, is to is to define what success what success really is in this matter, and and to look at it. You can't look at it from a global perspective, saying, okay, well, success is you being sober for six months. No, no, no. success is going to be is is winning the day, and, and it's one of the, it's just making those small steps and, and really asking yourself, um, you know. Am I better today than I was yesterday? And whether it's as a as a parent, you know, as a spouse, as a partner, um, you know, if you can honestly tell yourself and, and and say that I am better today than I was yesterday, then then you're moving in the right direction. So, if you use these key principles, um, it's it's pretty much you know, in my mind, it's proven that it's going to help people move forward in their lives, you know, finding that purpose and essentially just you know, keep moving forward.